What it is, y'all? It is your old boy Pilk, and I'm coming back at you today with more Daimachi, and we are talking about the Before You Summon video. Let's just roll into it, because there's a lot to talk about. We're going to kick it off with the first banner we should be getting. That is the new Elise, new Finn, and new Freya Assist. And we're going to kick it off, of course, with Elise. She is kind of going to be the new unit. Hopefully we get Val Bouquets. I really hope we get Val, Val Bouquets for everybody. Because if you only get Val Bouquets for Elise, everybody else gets kind of screwed. But if they stick to what they've done before, that might be the way it works. But I really hope they, they have the... Uh, I mean, Right Flyers Hall is really good, but, that, but I really, really, really hope that they have the foresight to give us everybody's Val Bouquets. Because that would help us out drastically. If you don't know what I mean by that, basically it's the CP items for these units. Every single one of these units needs to be level 50 before you end the event. They have to be. They need to be. So if you haven't been grinding out these events, make sure you do that. Watch literally every other video I've ever done. Uh, their 30th anniversary, we talk about it. But let's get down to what Elise does. Skill 1 for Elise is a foes, plural, fast. AoE damage resistance minus 30%. For 4 turns, she gains an additional... Okay, yeah. She gains an additional three uh, actions that are foes, plural, low fire magic attack. So the other release was physical. This one is going to be fire. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff, though. Um, that AoE damage resistance is going to be clutch, and she's going to be really, really, really good for war game. Skill two is a foes, plural, high fire magic attack with temporary magic boost and ultra critical Self magic fire magic and fire damage plus 70% for three turns. Now that's really, really good, but I think that's gonna be most useful in like seventh zone, especially seventh zone. Um and not record buster, but any other kind of event like that, especially I feel like the Familia Rush coming up is gonna be dragons. I mean we can pretty much guarantee that. I have to check the data mines. We just got the data mines, and so I've got to jump in and check that here in just a few minutes. I'm pretty sure. That will have some kind of drop on that. I don't know for certain, though. But uh, her skill three is a foe singular high fire magic attack with ultra on guard rate. For every magic buff on herself, she does skill damage plus 35%. So even her single target is going to be really, really, really good. Her passives are every magic buff... Or I'm sorry. <laughs> I almost read the last part of the, the previous skill. Wind resistance plus 35%. Magic AGL and dex plus 30%. Counter rate damage 50%. Critical and penetration damage, minus 10%, and she's a dragon killer. Interesting note, it doesn't look like her counter damage is elemental. So that's interesting. Maybe that's just missing here, but we generally do see that in new units, but maybe they've decided to leave that off for one reason or another. Um, interesting of note here, though, is that that AoE damage minus 30% is going to be really, really good for her. And if you aren't aware of how the three extra attacks work... In war game, basically for the next turn, turn after that, turn two, turn three, and turn four, each time she hits, she hits a second time. That's really, really, really important because even if she has to re debuff, that's still an action. She's still going to then attack. So if you have her set to debuff every single turn, she's going to do that debuff just to keep it active, but she's also going to hit every turn after that too. So there is something to be said for that. And those extra actions do count towards, like, if you, if, you, if they're running, like, uh, Chloe assist or someone like that that reduces physical damage, each one of those hits will actually tick away at that box. So while there are low attacks, there is a strategy to getting those out, because if you get those out early, especially this being a fast skill, you set her to debuff, she does the debuff, turn two, she starts doing these hits, and that starts wearing down their defenses at least as far as that Chloe assist goes, or even a stray assist, or someone like that. So there is a certain strategy to getting these extra low fire attacks. They seem like they don't do a lot of damage, and they do moderate damage. But even unbuffed, what you're basically doing is chipping away at their defenses little by little. It will count towards whatever you're going towards. So she is really good for war game. Um, that AOE damage resistance is going to be really important, uh, especially if you're trying to turtle in war game. Uh, a lot of. I've seen a lot of, and built a lot of, uh, stall teams, and I think that damage resistance is going to be a fun sack. Won't be so good if you sack her and then she doesn't get the extra attacks, but sometimes sacks don't work out. So, because you can't exactly use the anklets in war games, so you got to live with what you got. Uh, her special arts is a foe's plural ultra fire magic attack with temporary great magic boost. Which kind of offsets the fact she doesn't have a super skill. So she gets that temporary great magic boost. Self damage. 
I'm sorry, magic and fire damage plus 80% for two turns. And as you know, you got to run her with someone that replicates buffs like Haruhime, which is on just about every team ever. Um, at least she dropped last year. Uh, so that is just basically going to be replicated to the end of the game. She is an absolute monster. Love this unit. Cannot wait to try her out. And uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about Finn real quick. Okay. Also, her stats. If you look at her stats, she has 3,785 health, so she got a ton of health. She got a crazy amount, all over a thousand agility. So she's going to be first attacker almost all the time. There's very few units that have higher agility than that, and her magic is almost 2K. Put a little bit of CP in her, she's going to have 2K magic. So she's going to be one of the best magic hitters in the whole game. She actually might outdo the Ryu from the Goblin Slayer event. So we'll have to test that out and see. Finn. Finn stats. Almost the same amount of HP. Over 2,000 uh, attacks. So he's going to be really awesome to begin with. Almost 1,000. Not quite 1,000 um, AGL. But I believe that's Dex. That's 850. Is that Dex? I think it's Dex or Endurance. Uh, let me pull it up here because I'm going to be real. I completely forget which one is in which order. And I know, naughty me, I should know this right off the top of my head, but... Let's just grab somebody here. Um, come on. So that is if it would go. Don't go to CPs. Go to album. There you go. Great. Perfect. Yeah, that is Dex. I was right. Endurance is the second one. Dex. So even Endurance is really good. So Endurance in the 600s is good. Dex in the 850s means he's going to be countering a lot and criticaling a lot. So that's going to be really, really, really important. Um, so, I mean, that deck skill with that uh, agility skill, I don't think we see that very often. Like, we might see 600s or 700s. It's not every day you see double S's in both those. At least not until you start putting CP in them. Uh, I would not be surprised if we start seeing triple S stats in some of those as you get them up there. So, he's going to be really, really good. His skills. Skill 1 is a foe's plural, fast, low wind physical attack with ultra critical for four turns. Allies strength and agility plus 30%. So strength and agility go up 30% for everybody. That agility is going to be really key, really important. Foes, plural, low wind, low, I'm sorry, not even low. Foes, plural, wind resistance minus 40%. So it's like a buff and a debuff all built into one. That is going to be awesome because we never, ever, ever see AoEs that especially just regular AoE attacks that do minus 40%. That's like an alt type thing. That is like a special art skill right there. And he's just doing it right out of the gate. That is going to be killer in uh, like seventh zone. It's going to ruin things. If you've built a, ma a majority win team for uh war game, congratulations. You need this dude. This dude is going to be amazing. Amazing. I would go so far as to say the win team got some of the best, if not the best buffs in the in third anniversary period end of discussion um skill two foes plural super win physical attack for super we've seen with alter uncounter rate reduces all physical resist magic resist fire resist so fizz magic and all elements i believe all let's see fire water thunder earth wind light dark i think that's everything yeah i think that's everything so it removes all those buffs uh, reduces, I'm sorry, it doesn't reduce those buffs, but it re uh, reduces all those buffs by three turns. Might as well remove them. So, basically every buff, Fizz, Magic, and ele any element reduces that by three turns. I don't think there's any missing elements there. I think that's all the elements. Um, let's see. Once again, I can check it real quick. Uh, easy enough to do. So we've got Physical Magic, Fire, Water, Thunder, Earth, Wind, fire, water, thun thunder, earth, wind, light, dark. Yeah, no, all of the all of the elements, every single element. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Finn is pretty much a must. Um, the best part about that. So if you're thinking about this for like war game, that he's gonna come out of the gate and basically remove everything. Like your opponent can buff the crap out of themselves, and he's gonna come in and go, ah, you're not doing that. Nothing doing this turn. It's going to be really, really, really important. And the nice part is with his agility being a little bit lower, that does mean that 
you have those units that are going to come out, they're going to buff, and he's going to be like, nah, uh-uh, we're not doing that. So, yes, your team will take a little bit of hits early on, but that does mean for units that have elemental counters, their counters aren't going to have that elemental damage, which is going to reduce your counter the damage you take as a counter drastically. So that's definitely something to consider. I think he's extremely good, and I think Wind is borderline broken after the kind of the, the way fire was broken last time after third anniversary i think wind is this broken skill three foe singular wind physical attack with ultra unguard rate for every strength buff on himself skill damage plus 35 percent remember this also counts for uh assist buffs so you gonna you know he's gonna get a strength buff uh so let's see uh yeah he gives himself strength 30 percent because allies includes himself and then if you've got like a strength 15 or 20 percent on him from your assist that's going to be a 70 percent skill damage so he's even his single target is even going to be deadly so this dude is an absolute must you gotta have finn he's going to be so good in all aspects of the game passives earth resistance plus 35 percent counters are wind element remember we talked about elise who doesn't seem to have that but she has 50% extra damage. Strength, 30%. Uh, endurance, agility, and dex plus 25%. Remember, we already talked about those skills being really, really high. They get even better. Penetration damage, 15%. And he's a dragon killer. So, really, really, really awesome unit. Special Arts is a foe's ultra wind physical attack with great temporary strength boost and ultra penetration. Ally strength, magic, and wind damage plus 60% for three turns. Once again... All allies get 60%. We saw that with uh, Elise from last time, and you know how amazing she is? This dude does basically Elise's ult from last time, but for wind. He is a must. This dude is a must for your wind team. Trust me when I say you want Finn 100%. If you're a new player, this is an amazing banner to hit. You need these units, okay? Uh, 100%. So let's go ahead and talk about Freya. Okay, Freya is pretty straightforward. She uh, she's really good dexterity, not as good AGL, but Dex can come in clutch. Uh, her assist skill is allies counter rate plus twenty percent, foes critical rate and penetration rate and guard rate down ten percent. So I'll be real with you: if you are a war game fanatic, if you're trying to go far in war game, I think this unit is an absolute must absolute must um that critical rate penetration rate and guard rate is going to keep you alive i would almost say she's good for like a sack when i uh, well not not a sack so much but you bring her in after your sack is dead and then she just pff, drops everybody down so first turn they're gonna do a little bit of damage remember our first turn most people are like buffing up she's gonna come in and go pff, nah bro you're not really doing that right now i kind of like her um, I think Freya is really, really, really good. And she's going to be great in War Games. She's going to be great in Familia Rust. She's going to be great in Record Buster. She is an absolute unit. And I think she's probably... It's hard to say the better of the two. I think Alan's a little bit better. But I, I'm going to go ahead and let me say you want them both. But let's go ahead and jump over to the other banner. This is going to be the Part 2 banner, Justice Roar! And that is going to have our new Ryu. So let's go ahead and talk about her. New Ryu. Now, here's the interesting part. Remember, before you can start going crazy, oh my god, this Ryu looks amazing. She does. You're going to get a copy of her. You 100% will get a copy of her. This isn't like Record Buster, where it only drops the bond. If I read all the information correct yesterday, we are going to be getting a unit, not a bond. So... That starts to take the thunder away from this uh, a little bit, but I still think, yeah, hopefully, you've got enough Iris to 100% go in on both of these banners. Because whatever's coming up after this is probably going to be good, but I really feel like these banners are an absolute must. An absolute must. All right, and we're going to have plenty of time to farm up Iris, and we're going to get a ton of Iris in the meantime. So if you were following me along yesterday with what I was saying, this is really critical really important all right so she's not quite 3700 hp but she's up there uh once again her agility is through the roof 
Her uh, dex is really high. Remember, dex is going to control things like critical raid and counter rate and things like that. Her magic isn't quite 1900, but that is still high. 1815 is a really, really high magic stat. Remember, magic is generally a tiny bit lower than uh, a strength stat. So that's a fantastic magic stat. All right. Uh, what does she do? Well, first things first, skill one, allies, slow. Buff magic and dex plus 30%. So that's going to happen basically at the end of the turn. Self win damage plus 70% for three turns. That's a huge win buff. Gain three additional actions. Foe's low win magic attack. Remember we talked about how great wind is going to be. And if she gets that 70% win buff, every turn after that, she's going to be hitting like an absolute truck. Absolute truck. Pair that with... with like the heart he may buff that gives her 100% magic, and that is gonna those uh, low even though they're low attacks they're gonna be deadly. Skill two is a foes, so the skill one's just a buff, 100% just a buff. Skill two is a foes plural. <coughs> Excuse me. Fast wind magic attack with ultra penetration allies wind damage plus 35% foes counter and guard rate down 30%. I'm gonna be honest here. I think skill two is the skill you want to do for her in war game. Um, the buff's going to be good, especially if you're building like a win team. But more than that, the counter and guard rate reduction is going to be critical to survival. Taking the wind out of their sails in that regard is going to be really, really, really good. So if you're new at the game, you really want this unit. But like I said, you're going to get a free one anyway, though these units are time limited. We'll get to that here at the end of the video. Skill 3 is a foe singular high wind magic attack with ultra critical and temporary magic boost. Extends debuffs by two turns and her passives. Earth resist plus 35%, counters her elemental damage, magic, agility, endurance, and dex all plus 25%. Using a katana will increase her magic 15%, so she always needs to be equipped with a katana. Make sure you do that. Counter damage plus 50%, notice that's not elemental again. Oh, no, actually, it already says that. It says it up earlier than that. So counters are elemental and wind damage, or uh, elemental wind damage, uh, and plus 50%. So her counters are going to be deadly. Now remember, she gives herself wind 70%. But if you don't get that for whatever reason, or it starts to run out, or whatever happens, she can always use the buff from Finn, though her buff is technically better, uh, though Finn does give her uh, magic as well. So, it's worth definitely thinking about. Though if you're using Haruhime, Haruhime does have a way better stat there. So her buff with Haruhime is going to be like, you know, combined what, 170, whereas Finn's is going to be what, combined 120. So, you really want to think about that, but I'm going to be real, most of the time you use, you're probably going to be using hers, her buff with Haruhime's buff, so... And it gets even better than that because her special arts, foes, ultra wind magic attack with temporary great strength boost. Not, it's a strength boost. Why does it say strength boost? Because she's a magic unit. That doesn't make sense. Something's wrong with that. It's got to be a great magic boost. We'll have to look at that when she drops. It doesn't make sense to be a strength boost. Because her strength stat is so poor. And it doesn't really have any bearing on the damage. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if that's... So let's reread this. Foes plural ultra wind magic attack with temporary great strength boost. I'm guessing it's going to be magic boost. Ultra on guard rate self wind damage plus 100% for two turns. So now if you've got Haruhime giving her the 100% magic... Now she has 100% wind. She's going to be a monster. A living, human-breathing steamroller of wind. She's going to be amazing. Well, I guess Elvin, technically. She's going to be amazing. Such a good unit. And the fact that you're going to get one of her free is... I, there are not words. Let's talk about the unit I'm most hyped for. And it's Otaro. And why you should be hyped but a little cautious, okay? Otaro is kind of the mixed bag on this team. Now, if you look at him initially, his HP is off the chain, his strength is off the chain. 
His agility and dex leave something to be desired, but he's more of a record buster unit. Like, this dude is legit just a record buster unit. Now, hear me out. Let's talk about his skills first. Skill 1 is a self... Strength and earth damage plus 75%. So he's already coming out of the gate with crazy attack damage. Gains three actions, foe, singular, low earth physical attack for four turns. So, no, that's three actions. So, okay. So the way this is worded is weird. His strength and earth damage is going to be for four turns. These are going to be three actions. So basically... What that's going to do is that's going to extend, extend his strength and earth attack damage buff just far enough that he can get those three actions out. Because remember, turn one isn't going to have the action. Turns two, three, and four are going to have those extra actions. So if you're rebuffing those actions, technically you do skill one, turn one, two, and three, and then turn four, you do it again if you're buffing it that way. If you've got horror, you don't have to worry about that. But just so you know how these things work. That's skill one. Skill 2 is a foe's singular, fast, high earth physical attack with physical resist and earth resist, minus 35%, guard rate down 50%. Now, we've seen some units that do crazy guard rate reductions, but these guard rate reductions we're getting with these units are insane. I've talked about how good guard rate reduction is before, and I think now, I think 50% is the best we got that is not an SA, and I think even the next best one is 50% as an essay so if you are going into record buster ever with an earth team you need him and i'm going to bet tonight's record buster is going to be earth week no the only reason i say that is because it always corresponds with the units that drop so if you want good record buster scores this dude's gonna be a must if you want to beat some of the upcoming seventh zones this dude's gonna be a must Hear me out and hear me loud on this one. You notice all our units are dragon killers, including this dude. And every single one of his skills is a foe singular. We haven't even gotten to skill three yet. Every single one of these is foe, foe, uh, foe singular, on him at least. As we always know, the Familia Rush, the first enemy is uh, AoE. All There's a ton of units. There's usually you know two, three, four units on uh, level two. Level 3 is always a single target unit. And I imagine, because of his skills, that unit is probably going to be weak to Earth. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now, let's talk about skill 3 and let's talk about... Let's talk about skill 3 special arts and, and kind of the, the high and low point of this. So, foe singular, super Earth physical attack with temporary strength boost and ultra critical rate... Strength and magic minus 45% for two turns. I think you can kind of guess that that does mean that the single target unit in Family Rush is going to buff strength and magic. So I think that's going to be handy. That passives are thunder resist plus 35%. Counters are earth element. Lo the lower the HP, the more damage your counter does. Strength plus 35%. HP and MP 8% regen every turn. HP regen every turn is awesome, but... We don't see too many of those. But MP regen every turn is going to be pretty awesome. Um, and that does mean that probably that skill 3 is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely MP expensive in order to get off. So let's really... Either that or skill 1. Skill 1 probably will be pretty expensive. I, the whole thing's going to be MP costly. So you're probably going to need the, the Hestia that does MP regen, if I'm completely honest here. But... As I said before, he's got Dragon Killer. Special Arts is a foe, singular once again. Alter Earth Physical Attack for every Strength and Earth Damage buff on himself, plus 35%. Remember, that includes Assists, because the buff for uh, Adventures and the buff for Assists work separately. So, he has a Strength buff and an Earth buff from Adventure. He has a Strength buff and Earth buff from Assists. He's going to get... 140% for all four of those. Start doing math. He's going to be absolutely disgusting. And his counter rate goes up 60%. Says for one turn, but if you use uh, if you use Haruhime's essay 
or uh, sorry, Haruhime's uh, Yosuga skill, that's going to keep replicating. So his counter rate is going to be absolutely off the chain. And once again, his counter is going to be unbelievable. This dude's a must, man. I absolutely love this unit. But hear me out on Otaro. As I always say with single target units, extremely, extremely, extremely conditional. This dude is a record buster unit. You're basically getting this dude to throw into record busters when you got no one else. I do that a lot with Katori, to be fair. This dude probably will out damage Katori. I've got to sit down and actually do some maths on that at some point. Compare all these single target units because we got some crazy single target units now. Um, I basically he's a record buster unit. So if you're tr looking to go hard on record buster, you want this dude, and I think it's going to pay off because the amount of Irish you're going to get for your record busters going forward, you're going to love him. You're going to use him a lot even when he isn't necessarily in the highest regard. And meaning he is not the the unit that you're fighting isn't necessarily weak to earth. He's still going to be pretty clutch. So, especially with physical resist, earth resist down 35%, and guard rate down 50%, this dude's basically going to take somebody apart and just make them deficient. I mean, it's Otaro. What the hell do you want? And look at that art. The, if nothing else, the art is just totally collectible. But to be fair, Otaro's art is generally pretty damn good. So, I think this is a really, really, really good unit. Um... Let's talk about Alan, because I think Alan is probably the better of the two assists, so I think both assists are amazing. His agility is off the chain. It's a really, really, really good stat for an assist. And his HP is almost 1,000, which is amazing for an assist. What was Freya? Uh, Freya was not even 900. So he's, he's the better part of that. He's got 100 more HP. He's got 100 more... Uh, uh, agility that she even had dex so he's really 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 good the, I, once again like i said the better of the two assists assist skills are foes plural agility down 15 percent self-critical and penetration rate 20 percent now notice the self-critical and penetration rate that instantly starts to kind of like wear on him a little bit though the foes agility is gonna be really really good I see this dude being used on Wargame a lot. That Taking the agility down 15% takes the wind out of your opponent's sails. Remember, agility is what lets you get off attacks early. So this dude is basically designed to get you attacks, get you many of them, get you early. Um, the self-critical and penetration rate. Basically, the only way this is really going to be super useful is if you build a stall team. Because when you build a stall team, you basically have one decent attacker. And the only exception to that, the only exception to that is if you have Haruhime. Now, while she won't get a lot from the penetration rate, well, she wouldn't even get penetration or critical. I was thinking counter, but it's not counter, it's critical. So scratch that. Yeah, you would put this on, like, whatever unit you're attacking with. So, like, on a stall team, you have, like, three units that are just basically sitting there, like, healing and stopping damage and all that stuff. He's going to be on whatever unit's doing damage. So let's say... For the sake of argument, Old Rage Ataro's out front. Old Rage Ataro has this dude on him. Now, he may not have the best strength stat, which he doesn't. It is going to take away some of the damage that Otaro is doing. That said, that critical and penetration could make up some of that deficit. And with that HP, it's going to make your unit very survivable. Plus, with that agility, your unit's getting their attack out earlier. The agility down 15% means your opponent is basically lagging behind. So if you run him with a slow, now to be fair, slow is ailment. So slow basically reduces agility, but it's an ailment type of agility reduction. So it's not as fundamentally easy to get off. A lot of people run anti-ailment these days. This dude basically comes out of the gate and is just like, halt, debuff, and let's not let our team go first. And then they just start hacking away at the other team. By the time your team's done doing its run, then they come in. The problem is that critical rate and penetration rate is only who he's tied to, so you need to be really cautious about that. And not having the best strength buff, not having the best magic buff, makes him a little questionable. But I still think he's probably the better of the two assists. Um, man, I forgot that he was self-critical in penetration. That almost makes Freya a little bit better. So I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to say 
If you're a new player and you have to pick a banner, pick this banner. I think that's my opinion. These units are going to be a little more versatile. You're going to use them in general uh, grinding. You're going to use them in war game all the time. You're going to use them in familiar war game. You're going to use them in the first two turns of familia rush, all that stuff. These units are going to be used all the time. These units, on the other hand, are going to be a little conditional. So, and reuse free. Alan is very, very, very specific, kind of like only for war game in very specific terms. I forgot that he was he was foes. I'm sorry. Yeah, self critical and pen. So, yeah, I think this be be more than bold enough if you'd like to disagree with me in the comments section. But I really feel like this is the better of the two teams. Though I really think it's going to pay dividends to uh, go after both of them. It will be eight thousand hours to max both of them out, but that would be the goal. So. You guys want to see the essay one more time? Let's go watch the essay one more time. I'm going to go ahead and mute my music here so we can hear this in all of its glory. Boom. Because these essays are actually fun to watch, especially Otaro's. I love Otaro's so much. I'm going to turn this up ever so slightly. There she goes. I don't care what anybody says. Hers looks really good too. Her essay is amazing. I love their reactions to it too. This is from the official live stream. Finn's gone full rage mode too. <laughs> and the best of the four. I can't get enough of this essay. This is just hands down the best of the bunch. What would you expect from a level seven? What an absolute unit. So, yeah, those those essays look unbelievable. Um, so like I said, if you had to pick one, I definitely would go with this one. Though I really do feel in my heart of hearts like Otaro is going to be absolutely necessary. Uh, I really like Dallin, but the more I really start to think about him, he's extremely conditional. The AGL down is going to be really good, but I don't think that's really like more of a beginner tactic. So if you have to pick one of the two banners, I have to go with the first one. This is more of like a whale banner. This is this is for people that have been a little more advanced in the game. Though that said, Ryu's going to be amazing, and you're going to get a free one of her. So if you have to pick someone to throw star bonds into at this juncture, I think she's definitely like the one. If you miss out on these two, it's not the end of the world. But if you can justify it, go all the way on both of these banners before they leave. They're both really, really good. So that's the video, guys. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments section down below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that old thumbs up button. Yeah, those are my opinions. Catch you guys on the next one. I'm out.